Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you're joining in the world. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are here to introduce ACA3, uh, brand new next generation of ACA. My name is Darren Bardock. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here at ACA, formerly known as Lightbend. And today we're going to take you through an agenda. We have a few people from the organization that are going to share some information with you, including demonstrate the new product. Um, Tyler Jewell, our CEO, is going to introduce the conversation today and really talk about why this next generation of ACA matters, uh, what it means to our customers, and importantly, what it means to everyone out in the community that is uh, not working with us today. Jonas, our CTO and founder, is going to spend a few minutes talking us through really what is this new ACA 3 product and what it does, what are some of the really great, interesting features that it provides. And then Dan's going to actually follow up and show you some of those. And I think you're going to see some things that you have not seen in a product before. Uh, Ken is going to share next steps and really help you understand uh, kind of some of the pricing and some of the uh, next steps as far as getting engaged with us. If you do have questions based on what you hear today, if you're interested in finding out more, just reach out to us. Um, you can go to aka.io. There's a lot of information on the website, but as you have further questions, just contact us and we'll get in touch with you as soon as we can, okay? So to uh, make sure everyone knows, uh, just recently we did announce that Lightbend is now Aka. So we'll be doing business as Aka. Um, everything as far as our products that we've done over the last 15 years, all the lessons learned, all the engagements with the thousands of applications that we've helped uh, different organizations uh, build and run, that's all really being pulled into this next generation of the product, and that's what you're going to hear about today. So Lightbend is now Aka, and I'm going to turn it over to Tyler to do the next conversation and really introduce you to what it is and why it matters. Tyler? Uh, it's absolutely a thrill and exciting to be here today. Uh, we are so happy to be introducing Aka3 to everyone. And it is the culmination of nearly eight years of work that started with a bunch of ideas that were drawn on a whiteboard um, in Sweden. And when we set out to think about the next iteration of Aka, we had a couple of problems that we wanted to solve. The first was is that we wanted to provide a comprehensive and total solution to solving the problems of non-responsiveness. And then the second is, is that we set out to solve all kinds of problems around complexity um, and velocity of the development cycle. And so let's talk about those. In order to solve the problems of non-responsiveness, we have to understand what is responsive. A responsive app is one that was defined in the reactive manifesto that Jonas is an author of that's over a decade old. And responsiveness was originally defined to be elastic, which are your workloads being able to auto scale to varying external events and resilience, which is this ability to recover from a failure. But we've also broadened it to include a third pillar here, uh, which is agility. And agility is the ability for your application to continue to deliver its services during a variety of maintenance events, such as an infrastructure upgrade or a schema change. So non-responsiveness the, is the opposite of that. And there's a variety of things that lead to your application services being non-responsive. And you know what's really interesting is that when we talk to the thousands of customers who have been making use of ACA over the years, um, they all speak to a number of problems that draw them in that they continue to have even after they've built those applications. First is, is that if you deliver a service out into the market and you have a long recovery time objective for failover or disaster recovery, and long here being minutes, then your application is non-responsive. If you are running an application at a large number of concurrent end users and they have varying end user latencies, then your application is non-responsive. If your users are in different regions and they have varying end user latencies, then your application is non-responsive. If you go through a significant upgrade and your end users are blocked, or you have downtime for some of your services as a result of that, the application's not responsive. It should continue to deliver its services through that 
through that period. And if your release velocity is slow as measured in weeks or months, um, and it's not continuous, then that's also a form of non-responsiveness because your teams are unable to push out changes at the speed that they want to do um, because they're worried about impacting the availability of it. These things are all forms of non-responsiveness and we set out to tackle them. The interesting approach that ACO was taking was that you know, when you try to design an application, if you depend upon your infrastructure services to deliver responsiveness, such as availability or latency, there's always going to be a gap. You cannot actually guarantee agility, elasticity, or resilience by depending upon the infrastructure because the infrastructure doesn't understand the application itself. And as Jonas wrote about in the reactive principles, until the application takes responsibility for its own outcomes, um, you have an uncertain future. And what we're introducing now with ACA3 is an approach whereby the applications that you build take and maintain responsibility for their own outcomes. Outcomes here being the SLA that you want to target. And we achieve this by enabling the applications to adapt continuously independent of their infrastructure bindings. This is an approach where the applications uh, take control and they are ultimately responsible for their SLAs. And this SLA encompasses elasticity, agility, and resilience. And so with this new version, when you build applications with Akka, they will auto scale to varying workloads up to 10 million IOPS per service. Um, the upgrades that you can do have no downtime maintenance, whether it's for version changes, infrastructure upgrades, or schema alterations. And furthermore, um, as Akka has always been enabled, your applications can recover from network or hardware failures uh, through our event sourcing mechanism, change data capture, and snapshotting. Additionally, aqua has been around for 15 years. It's been downloaded over a billion times, and we've heard two things from people who make use of Akka. One, that it's powerful and it always just works. Um, and it's remarkable. There's over 100,000 applications that have been built out there, and more than 2 billion people on any given day touch an application that is powered by Akka. Um, it has been you know, put through the ringer, if you will, and it is proven safe in production environments. But on the flip side of that, given the history of Akka, there was a variety of things, both of a conceptual nature and of an implementation nature that took a long time to learn in order to implement those applications correctly. And so uh, we heard from people that it could take upwards of six months to incorporate all the knowledge necessary to be successful with Akka. And furthermore, Akka with the libraries were unopinionated. It allowed you to build services that had all kinds of different behaviors. And as a result of that, every application was a behavioral snowflake. And because it was a behavioral snowflake, we couldn't offer any sort of guidance around how to operate. The operating behavior or the operating footprint for each application was unique to that application. And, and that was a challenge for a lot of our customers because they had to figure out how to operate it themselves. Well, our second goal with Akka was to make Akka available for everyone, not just advanced developers and architects, but junior developers, and also that those applications could be fully operated by Akka itself. So Akka 3, we are Still, I'm sorry, we still have the libraries that are available. They've actually been advanced. We're continuing to invest in them. And that comes with a do-it-yourself operating model. But now we are introducing an all-new SDK. And the SDK makes it simple for any developer to build applications that are day two operations ready. And we're also introducing three new operating environments, a serverless environment, a BYOC, bring your own cloud environment in one of your favorite hyperscalers, and a self-hosted environment. And those environments will accept the applications that you build with the SDK and provides automation uh, for service elasticity, running um, for resilience automatically, 
migrations between cloud environments and an all new multi-cloud, multi-region capability that we're gonna talk a little bit and show a demo of. The most powerful thing that we are introducing with ACA3 is that you can operate your cloud, your applications, excuse me, um, not just across different ACA operating environments, but across different regions. And those different regions can actually exist within the same hyperscaler or across hyperscalers. Uh, and that includes Google, Amazon, and Azure. And your application uh, is a stateful application. It actually has logic and data. And when you deploy, you do a singular deploy. Uh, Akka takes care of deploying your application into all the regions that you have configured, regardless of the clouds that they're in. And then furthermore, that application maintains its location transparency and its ability to move. And so we automate the replication of the application's data across all those different environments. And when your application has all of its data fully replicated, independent of its infrastructure, you get a zero millisecond disaster recovery RTO because every instance of your application is running in a different region. And if you lose one region, the other regions pick up exactly where you left off and can continue to service those requests. And now off to Jonas to talk about what's inside and how it works. Thank you, Tyler. Yeah, so Akka is, is, is built upon a, you know, a, a, sort of a core set of, the, of, the, of design principles. You know, the first one is, is that we're always distributing data and, and logic to, together. Uh, you know, we do that this, this by, you know, by having each serve each individual service to ha have its own sort of durable in-memory database that is, that is fully mobile, fully resilient, resilient re recoverable, and, and very, very efficient. And you know, keeping key, so keeping data and logic together means that we can, you know, inside the in the, the unit of the service means that we we the, we now can actually physically co-locate the service with the with the end user. Right? I mean, running it in the cloud naturally, but also running it in you know, all the way out at the edge of the network. And we can also sort of change the, the topology very easily and change where, the, where, where things are running because all these services contain everything they, they need and they are fully mobile to, and, and able to run wherever. You know? and, and, and one of, the, one of the things that this sort of benefits that this gives is that, he, that we can now build easily applications with immensely low level, their low uh, latency. You know, since, since if we actually are running Physically, where the end user is running, you know, there's almost no latency to in 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 working with the data that the user provides, and also, you know, if if the end user, and the data and the logic to serve it, in, you know, is in the same place, that this this means that the network around it can actually go down, I and mean, you, you you can even lose the connection to 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 the back end cloud for a shorter or longer period periods of, 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 of time while still being. 100 percent available being able to serve your customer or the user right where he is you know and, and another core principle is that is you know each service is extremely lightweight and extremely efficient this means that that you can build systems you know consisting of hundreds of thousands of service instances and 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 being efficient means that we you know aka make sure that we scale up as demand grows you know but also scale down so we don't consume any more resources, you know, apart from, you know, um, you know, sort of the, the, the tiny bit of infrastructure needed around it, you know, when, when, thing, when things are idle. And, and, we're, and, and if, if, if a service that's idle is, is hit, you know, we can very quickly, you know, start, start up again or, or, or stop it or relocate it depending on how it need, it need to be used. You know, and another core principle is that we, and all communication between these services are fully asynchronous. You know, we we leverage that through message passing, through event-based messaging between them, uh, you, you using like really efficient streaming protocols, and always sort of piggybacking on non-blocking I/O when we have to do I/O to to databases, etc. And and you know. If these services all contain the logic and data, this means that we, we that we actually have a really good 
sort of way or, or starting point to implement fully self-healing services, you know, and 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 we 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 work really really hard to make that fully rock rock solid. You know, services that are always recovered from 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 from, from failure. All state changes are event logged and can be replayed on failure or replayed when you want to replicate because everything is also as Tyler said, you know, automatically replicated for you as long as you turn it on, of course. And, and 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 finally, you know, I'm, every service in our case fully location transparent, which means that that you know there's no fixed topology in how you in how you in, you know need to deploy your application, and, and that it always has to be has to be running like that. Everything is completely fluid, and 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 all services communicate the same, even even if they're running, you know. On two different cores, or if they run on two different nodes, or if they run on on two different regions, you know, or even in in different clouds, communications is sort of abstracted over, and it's always the same, uh, which makes it very, very easy to build these sort of fluid and fully adaptable systems using Akka. Next slide. So, you know, the last year we've been we've been sort of working hard to. To, to layer things around this really solid foundational model. And, and we're sort of expanding in, in, in a couple of very interesting directions. First, we have sort of really put a lot, a lot of effort in, in coming up with a really amazing developer experience with high level components, with local sandboxes, you know, where you can have, 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 a, have a, like event debugger right in the console running or all running locally, et cetera. We'll, 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 we'll talk more about that later. But we're also, you know, for the for the for the first time in in the history of our company, is starting to be very opinionated when it comes to our, the operation experience. You know, so we're really you know, sort of pulling these two these things, you know, all together now into a really unified platform. A, a great operation experience means that you you should have knobs to turn when it comes to replication things where you want to deploy. And we we're, and we're now offering three ways of deploying and running Akka, you know, fully fully serverless. You know, bring your own cloud and sell and self-hosted, and all of this is sort of is fully is fully is running on a fully managed infrastructure where we have compute, storage, and observ observability all built in to the platform itself. <clears throat> so, uh, Dan's going to give you a little bit of 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 of, um, of actually um, sort of um, examples how of, of of this uh, sort of. Uh, consoles and stuff like that that you will see but i'm just going to sort of say a few words on it so you know we 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 put a lot of effort into into building you, you know thinking through what is the sort of the minimal things but still sufficient you know things that developer needs to build needs to do in order to implement you know systems for the cloud and for the edge for hybrid cloud hybrid cloud to edge systems and all of these things and and and, and you know in a way that not all this sort of complexity, the essential complexity of the problem, not needless complexity, but the essential complexity, but it's not getting in the way, you know, and we, and we landed at, at a really simple model now where we have six different very high level components. You have entities that are essentially these in memory databases that I talked about, that are, talked about, that are, that are like fully resilient, fully, 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 fully durable, even though they actually work in memory and fully replicated, et, et cetera. And then we have views that allows you to do to to define queries that are sort of streamed back as, as sort of a live materialized views that that allow you to query multiple entities and 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 uh, and, and doing sort of sort of joins and stuff like that. We also have first class streaming built right into the product. You know, streaming producers and streaming consumers. We have high level workflows allowing you to do durable execution type of things where you have long running business processes and you want to ensure that they they, they always complete successfully and if they you know and when they don't you know they are full, fully recoverable and can sort of be restarted from wherever they failed without having any any sort of um, unexpected side effects or losing any data etc we have endpoints which allows you to 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 define your apis how your services communicate with the outside world through HTTP or, or through gRPC APIs, and finally we have timers. And and you know we we put a lot of effort in sort of separating the concern the concerns here, and and in a way that 
the business logic that you write is always like like you know, like like pure logic. It doesn't have any ACA or or any infrastructure codes, no annotations or anything like that. It's really super super simple, uh, uh, you know, plain code, which means that it's very easy to unit test and and, and to have a very fast turn turnaround time when when you develop this business logic. Then we sort of decorate that with ACA specific things to, to give you these capabilities of these components. And, and we have sort of packaged all that up in, in, a, in a sort of really, really amazing offline development environment. You know, we have a great test, test kit, like a full sandbox with event debuggers, local consoles, you know, you name it. And maybe making it very, very easy to build these systems, you know, as if you're building it a distributed system, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the cloud, but you're just doing it locally. All feels and behaves the same. Actually, it actually mimics the cloud de deployment. So when you then hit deploy, you know, everything will work just as expected. And, and for, for, for operations, you know, we put a lot of effort into, in, into, uh, you know, providing high level mechanisms for doing replication. You know, replication can be, can be quite hard and, 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 having, and having to do everything by hand as you had to do with, with, with sort of ACA libraries can sometimes, can sometimes be daunting. So, so what we've done here is we landed at, at sort of three d d different uh, sort of categories of replication, uh, uh, archetypes, you may say. For, like first we have single, single region, you know, that means that you actually pin your application, your services to a specific region, I mean, physic, physic, sort of geographic region. This can be very important if you want to ensure that data never escapes a specific uh, sort of country or region, etc. The next level is that we have multi-region replication using replicated read. That's, you know, sort of active passive mode, where we have one hot uh, uh, sort of replica serving writes and everyone else can serve, can serve reads and, their, and, and the replica that serves writes are automatically, you know, fully transparently replicating, uh, you know, constantly to, to these uh, uh, passive replicas, and 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 finally, you know, we have we have what we call replicated write. This re this is really fully like fully uh, uh, sort of a multi master replication, where, where 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 you can have any number of masters running in the system. You know, one in each region, one in each cloud, or multiple in each cloud, etc. Or, or three clouds, if you like. You know, uh, it's it's it's. It's really, I mean, everything is is really is really possible here, and and the and the key here is that all of them can serve rights, you know, con concurrently, and everything will sort of automatically, uh, uh, you know, fully converge, and 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 there will be no you know lost data or no stale data or 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 you know, sort of corrupted data here, and. Uh, you know, th this is extremely important, of course, for operations because all of these things can be done while the application is, is running. This makes it very, very easy to do things like migration, backups, or, or simply just scaling the applications to more to more regions, uh, or do cloud migration from one cloud to to, to another, etc. You know, the the options are endless here. So. And, and you know, for some of you that that that, that might you know 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 Akka since since uh, you know years back, you know Akka's been around for more than a decade. You know everything that you that that you have learned to love with Akka is still it's it's still here. We 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 now are sort of calling those our libraries. Everything that 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 I've talked about so far here is implemented and are using these libraries, which means that they are you know extremely close to our heart. You know we will continue to to improve them and, and, and evolve them. And, and, and sometimes you might need, you know, to, to drop down one level and, 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 uh, and, and, you know, get sort of closer to the metal. Uh, and, and then you can do that. And, and you can, you know, fairly easily write systems in the SDK and in the libraries and have them coexist, you know. So, so, so all options are available. However, I really encourage you to start with the SDK approach. It's 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 really you know, hitting at home, I think, in terms of capabilities. And I have very few of our customers and 
and and and end users have 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 you know started asking for more actually honestly so All right, with that, I'm going to walk us through a demo actually. Um, so I will show my screen here. We're gonna look at uh, Akka itself in action. And so I have a blank Akka environment here. It's an organization, uh, just sign up and you get one. And I'm going to create a project. Everything in Akka lives inside of a project uh, when it's running. And I'm just gonna call this my project and choose a region for it. We talked about regionality. You'll see I'm going to put this one in GCP. And so I'm creating this project. It creates very quickly. There's not much actually in this project yet. So I'm going to deploy a service. I'm going to call it a cart, a geo cart. Let's see, that's the service I want. And I'm going to hit deploy. <clears throat> and what this is doing now is taking that container image. You can see I've selected a container image, uh, which was built on my local machine. Um, and then put into a container registry. This one happens to be the one Akka supplies. You can also use your own. And now it's being deployed to GCP US East one, uh, which is happening uh, as we speak. And you can see it's ready. I can actually go look inside of this uh, service now. I can see the endpoints that it exposes and the four operations that this particular service supports. And I can go back to the service itself and, uh, and do other operations on it. Um, one thing I do need to do before I start using the service, at least over the internet, which I want to show, uh, it's a shopping cart service. I'm going to add and remove items from the, the cart, is I need to expose it so that I can get to it from the internet. And so I just hit expose service. And very quickly, you see I have a URL here. It's a, a domain name. It's in GCP US East. And now I can actually start going doing oper and doing operations against this. So the first operation I want to do is put some items in a cart. Um, so uh, that cart is going to be, uh, let's see, I'm going to use this. I'll put some t-shirts in the cart. Uh, the t-shirts I'm putting in the IP address or the domain name that we just highlighted there. Um, and now I put some t-shirts in a cart. And I can actually go now and read what's in the cart as well if I'd like. Um, and I'll just do that to show there's two shirts in the cart. And if I put three more shirts in the cart, then it'll update the cart. And I don't, I mean, I can show that again, but you know what? I'll actually show it in a more interesting way. So uh, what's in that cart now, I can actually see in the UI. Uh, and you can see that was item 10. That was the shopping cart number 10. Uh, I open this and I can see the state of it. I see five Aka t-shirts. I can actually go see every event that was part of this, this entity. So the first one was creating the cart with the two t-shirts. Second was changing the quantity of the t-shirts uh, for that item. Um, so this is all here. It's all deployed in Akka. This will automatically scale uh, up and down. Um, and so it's a pretty cool idea to quickly deploy a microservice and it's just running. But as you saw, it's in GCP US East one. So what if I want to go run this somewhere else now? Uh, I'm gonna hit activate here and go activate this to go run in AWS EU Central. So in this regions tab on this, you can see on the left, it's GCP, it's US, and on the right, it's AWS, um, and it's EU Central 1. And so now this is doing the same thing that it did the first time. It is pulling the container image. It's deploying that container into uh, some compute uh, running in that other data center, but it's also replicating all of the events, uh, which Jonas was talking about just a minute ago, and so now if I go back and want to look at my services, this is activating here. I go refresh my, my screen real quick. I, I see that my service is still here, this uh, GCP one, but I can actually see my drop down now lets me get to another region, to AWS EU Central. And so if I switch to that, um, it looks pretty much the same. You'll notice there's no IP address there or no DNS name. I mean, because it's a separate set of compute, even though it's the same geo stretched service. So what I need to do here now is expose the service. I get a new DNS right away, um, and I can go and start calling operations against this service, which I'll use a different terminal window for uh, just to make clear what's going on there. Um, and so when I paste this in, you'll see it. I just clicked and copied it out. It is EU central. Um, and if I run this command, I get my five Aka t-shirts. And if I wanna do something really cool, I can actually go change uh, the cart. I'm gonna put four coffee mugs in here. Um, and now uh, the carts on both sides, uh, I can actually see here I have two things. I have coffee mugs and t-shirts and both sides of this uh, 
geo stretched uh, service uh, explain that and show that back to me. So if I come back into my entity view, I load it up and I can actually see, hey, I have two items. I can see all of the messages that the events that cause this thing to have its current state along the way. Um, so that's pretty slick. Pretty happy about that. Um, but you know, we do start. I mentioned this was built locally on my on my laptop first before it was deployed. We do start our development process locally generally. So uh, I do want to real quick show what this is like uh, just a little bit, which is uh, on my left side terminal windows here. I'm the top one is is the shopping cart service. I'm in that right now in in the directory for that code. I'm just going to start the, the project locally. Um, and our CLI gives you a bunch of cool tools to manage not just the cloud, but your local stuff. And here I'm going to start a local council. And it's going to start up and it's going to look for any services I happen to have running on my laptop here. Uh, it's going to find one. There it is. It's found a shopping cart. Uh, it's telling me the port it's at. And it's also showing me that that local council is at uh, port 3000. And so here, this looks just like what I was doing in the other tab. It, it's not. If you look closely at the top, it says localhost. It's the same service. Um, there's nothing in it right now. Um, but if I want to go add something to it, I can go put something in that shopping cart, make sure that it's there. And I see all the exact same things um, that I would uh, in, in the cloud service. So this is all running locally. I'm able to actually debug this and see what's going on. Um, and it's a, a, a much easier to test and develop locally. And it's not some sort of emulator or anything. This is the full thing. Uh, so it can run heavyweight or lightweight. And now real quick, I want to talk a little bit um, on this next slide about what that code looks like and the snippets. Um, so on the left, you see what is called an entity, uh, the shopping cart entity. This is the Akka stuff. And on the right, you actually see a pure domain object, which is the shopping cart. There's nothing Akka like, there's nothing about Akka in that shopping cart. We talked about the separation of concerns. It means that shopping cart is pure business logic. Um, it's wrapped then later through, through our architecture model with this uh, event source entity in this case, which you can see there's stuff there, but it's not much. And all it's doing is taking the domain object and coordinating it together to work in this very distributed, highly available fashion. Um, so there's not a lot of code to do here. It's a much cleaner and simpler model than we had with our libraries. I um, mean, it helps you keep a strong separation of concerns so that your business logic is just business logic. And that is a very quick shotgun run through of Akka. Thanks, Dan. Um, wow, that, I mean, really incredible. You know, Akka 3 is, you know, simpler to develop on, you know, simpler to operate and, and you know, with, just amazing multi-region capabilities. And really, what does that mean? It means ACA3 is ready to go. Um, and we, you know, come to market with some significant customers already using uh, ACA3, um, you know, and, and doing large, you know, and small replatformings uh, of uh, their applications. Um, we have a global uh, SaaS provider, um, you know, in Europe, who's building uh, a, uh, a, 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 a large financial, uh, mid-market financial uh, application, um, you know, on ACA3, um, a bank, uh, a, a large international bank um, who is digitizing uh, their workflows uh, and building a new business line uh, on ACA3. And then a uh, significant online re, uh, online retailer uh, with over a, a million of writable IOPS, um, just building significant applications on Akka three um, today. Um, and you know, from a subscription perspective, you know, we continue to be really flexible in how we uh, offer our subscriptions. You know, you can always get the libraries, as you know, and have loved them for many years and continue to, uh, um, you know, uh, continue to operate them under the BSL. Um, the BSL allows, you know, customers under 25 uh, million in revenue to uh, operate, um, you know, in production for free. Uh, everybody can develop for free uh, and for companies larger than 25 million um, you know, we, we have, uh, licensing, uh, options, 
uh, reasonable licensing options to uh, use the, the libraries, the SDK, and, and self-hosted. Um, and now, uh, as part of ACA 3, we are also helping our customers operate um, uh, you know, the ACA as a service. Um, so you can either um, come to us for serverless, where we operate everything, including the cloud, um, or um, BYOC, where we'll help you run uh, ACA in your cloud um, of choice. Um, so just a little bit on pricing, we'll keep it high level here, um, but we try to really make ACA, you know, super reasonable uh, uh, to get started with um, on serverless. Uh, it starts at 25 cents an hour um, in bring your own cloud, um, starting at 15 cents an hour with, uh, you know, a $750 region set up on either AWS, GCP or Azure. Um, and, you know, for self-hosted, um, starting at 15 cents an hour with the 5K uh, setup fee um, for, uh, for workloads where you need, you know, total control. Um, and as always, you know, do it yourself. We have on-premise licensing options for the libraries. So um, we'll, we'll have, um, you know, some uh, uh, QR codes that you can scan. Uh, to get in touch with us with any questions that you might have about uh, pricing. And most importantly, um, you've heard a lot about, um, you know, resilience as we've talked uh, and reliability of ACA. And so we're now introducing the ACA resilience guarantee where we will actually indemnify um, our customers uh, for data loss. We are that confident in ACA's uh, resilience and re reliability um, and come talk to us and, and we're happy to have a conversation uh, and, and, and want you to be as confident as we are uh, in the ability to, uh, to kind of have highly resilient applications. So come request a demo, uh, get started for free, scan a QR code here. Um, and um, as you know, as part of the promotion, um, we will help you build your first application um, for up to about 25K and then take that and apply it to your uh, BYOC or serverless subscription. Um, and, you know, uh, come, you know, come, uh, come get started and, and uh, talk to the team and we're happy, happy to answer any questions that you might have. We are just so thrilled about this launch and what it represents for the community. Uh, we're thrilled to uh, have the community that has been built up over the last 15 years. Uh, everybody has been so uh, engaged and thoughtful in helping to uh, influence the direction that we've taken ACA. And really ACA 3 is that next you know, logical step um, in this journey that we've been on. Uh, we hope that you get an opportunity to embrace it. And I just want to wrap up here and just kind of tie it back to the original opening goals that we had, which was solving these problems of non-responsiveness and the simplicity. And, you know, we talked about four symptoms of non-responsiveness. The first one being these long RTO. And with our multi-cloud deployment full replication, you can get a zero millisecond RTO. You get full responsiveness in a multi-cloud environment. You can migrate your applications. You can do repatriation with them. We talked about latency variations. Well, what when you horizontally scale your application with us, you can get under 10 millisecond end user round trip write latencies on your data in a single region. And now you can operate the same applications in different regions getting the same deterministic latency profile. The applications, whether they are stateless or stateful with us, you can upgrade them continuously and the cutover of your end users is automatic. They will not be disrupted and you have a no downtime upgrade experience with Akka. And then last, we have innovated with completely offline development, uh, the toolkit, um, the, I'm sorry, the test kit for integration and unit testing locally. And as a result, 
you can build your applications either as an individual or in large teams without having to install or set up any additional infrastructure locally. It is DevOps and GitOps ready. And so you can implement a very rapid development cycle and uh, uh, that's almost 25 times faster than what you would do with traditional microservices frameworks. So the velocity is nearly instant. And so with that, we believe that we've cracked this responsive, this non-responsiveness problem, and that that's why we call Akka a responsive by design. Darren, wrap it up for us. That's great. Thank you, Tyler. And thank you, Jonas. Thank you to Dan. Thank you, Ken. Um, just thank you, everyone. Most importantly, thank you to the community that, you know, the last 15 years have been great, um, both from a technological standpoint. And I think we've, uh, we've been able to work with some really great customers out in the community, and we look forward to working with you as well. So please just visit Akka.io for more information. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, again, request a demonstration, real easy to do. And if you want to get started, you can get started right at Akka.io and get into that serverless environment that Dan demonstrated. So. Thanks very much and everyone good business.